This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Mayhem Underground, or formerly the show known as The Mid Week War! It is me, Mad Mike, rolling solo this week. Uh, Sorg and I were trying to connect over the weekend, but with Extreme Rules being in Pittsburgh, I had a few engagement parties and things that going on. So I'm just rolling in because, holy shit, Lucha Underground was insane this week, and I need to talk about it, and y'all need to listen to it, because if you haven't seen it, why the fuck are you watching this? Go watch Lucha Underground. Support the product. Anyway, um... We're going to do the same thing we do on this show every week. I'm going to start off with me palabra for the episode, my one word for the episode, and that is murder. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I could have had a number of different words this week. I could have had matrix. I could have had crowdsourcing. We'll get to that. Um there's a bunch of things that happen this a word medallions because holy shit four medallions were given out this week that's a lot of medallions there's only seven of them and four were given out this week alone and they were all in really fun matches um all right but uh let's start off with the way we always do me bueno my good for this week uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go right to the coda because the, the, the end um with the rabbit tribe <laughs> Because hot damn, Alex Sam. Um, okay, so where we last left the Rabbit Tribe last season on Lucha, uh, they thought Masqueria Sagrada was the White Rabbit because they're on drugs or kind of insane or maybe both. Um, Masqueria Sagrada comes back. He, so he tells them that he is not the White Rabbit, but the White Rabbit is ready to see them now. So um, my interest is peaked. Uh, we go into this really uh, trippy wormhole. They end up in a giant cave that we saw in uh, the preview for Lucha Underground where uh, indie wrestler Killer Cross is there, and he apparently is the White Rabbit. He's the guy with the big wooden staff that I thought kind of looked like Gandalf's staff. Um, and Masquerade Scar brings him there, and the uh the white rabbit wants to know how far they're willing to go and hands the staff to paul london paul london just murders masquerita sagrada like in literal cold blood like it the blood splashes everywhere it is damn ridiculous and i mean poor masquerita sagrada He's never going to get to have Bagel Bites with Son of Havoc again, you guys. That's very unfortunate for me. I I, I love Masqueria Sagrada, or I did. I did. Um, I hope you're fighting Big Rick in heaven, sir. I hope you are. And say hi to Bale and Mr. Cisco. And, well, maybe someone else will talk about. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um. So, uh, you know, not every show is perfect. Not even Lucha Underground, even though... We talk it up a lot. We enjoy it a lot. Not every show, not every episode is perfect. Um, me Malo for this week. Uh, we had another sacrifice to the gods. Uh, Mr. Cisco came. Uh, not Mr. Cisco. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm seeing ghosts. Uh, Cortez Castro came out, uh, which is weird because he was outed as a cop last season. So uh, Antonio Cueto comes out and, and tells him Cortez Castro. It's not even your real name. He didn't say Officer Reyes. I think it would have been cool if he did, but he didn't. Um, and then Antonio Cueto, still spinning hot fire, says he wants to report a, a homicide, or rather, a sacrifice. Out comes Matanza. Matanza and Cortez have a really quick match. And, I, I mean, maybe it's like an availability thing, and Cortez wasn't going to be available for the whole season. They just want to like write off his character. Okay, I get it, but I love watching Cortez Castro. Like Ricky Reyes is a great wrestler. I wanted to see 
a little bit more of him and Matanza, but Matanza's on a different level right now. So I get it. it's it's rich tapestry storytelling. And honestly, the rest of the matches on this show were so good. I can't even complain that we have one squash. Um I'll get into the matches afterwards because it, they're they're kind of a separate entity from everything else. Uh, if I had to change one thing from this week, uh, Mikambio. Oh, that's um. I don't know what exactly I would change this week. Uh, I because we had Joey Ryan versus Ivelisse for a medal for a medallion. Um, Ivelisse got the win. I like that. I thought that was good. Uh, we had Mill versus Cage in the main event. Pentagon Air. All right, my change. Now I'm gonna love the match. Uh, because we had we had Cage versus Mil Mortis for um one of the ancient Aztec medallions. And Pentagon was hiding within the believers and beat the shit out of Cage. Like he unmasked, he beat the shit out of Cage. It was pretty great. And then Mill got the win. Then Pentagon goes to Cage and says, Hope you're not too mad about losing the medallion because you're fighting me for the Lunar Underground title next week. I, that, that I don't get it. I don't get the motivation behind Pentagon doing that. Um, I, I, I think it's a little too weird. Like Pentagon's having a lot of title defenses, which I'm cool with, but they're all really a lot right in a row. Like first you had Aztec Warfare, then Matanza, and now Cage. Like that's three title defenses in what? Five episodes, four or five episodes. Well, six, six would be next week, but that's a lot. That's, I mean, maybe they're trying to counteract for a certain other program that doesn't have title defenses. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a little frog in my throat. Uh, no, you know, I mean, I, you know, it makes Panga a fighting champion. That's great. I would like to see maybe a non title match, maybe non title, like. You know, earn your title shot as opposed to just like it almost seems like you earn a title shot with Pentagon just by pissing him off, which, you know, it, it's a great way to do it. But I don't know. That was just my change. Just it's a little off. Uh, but let's talk about the matches. Let's talk about the rest of the show. Uh, I mentioned Eva Lee and Joey Ryan. Really fun match. Typical Joey Ryan fair. Uh, Eva Lee's. It's great to see Eva Lee's get a me medallion. I really. I haven't heard any, anything to the contrary. I really hope she stays healthy all season and can get to Ultima Lutra and can get or or can at least get in that gift of the gods match. Like that's gonna be a good time. Um the Mill Cage match I talked about before. Interesting thing about that, after Mill won, uh Katrina, who has now taken the lives of Phoenix, no longer did the kiss of death. I thought that was very cool. It showed a a kind of change in her character and she almost seemed above it. Like she just walked away from Mill instead of even like explaining or anything. And Mill did not seem too pleased with it. So I'm guessing there's gonna be more on that as it develops. Uh and lastly that we had a bomb ass triple threat match. Um triple threat match which as on Lucha Underground we want to see the trios champions fight each other. And that's when Antonio Cueto set up. However, he did throw in a different wrinkle. Um, he put two medallions on the line in the match between uh, Son of Havoc, Mac, and Killshot. Only the person that got pinned would not get a medallion. Very, very cool. Very cool. I like that a lot, especially given how Son of Havoc is kind of the unwanted partner uh, from the three of them because... Dante Fox is MIA. Who knows where he is? I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good match, as you can expect from these guys. Like they started off Aztec Warfare, so we kind of got a preview of this a little bit. But it paid off Aztec Warfare because in Aztec Warfare, Killshot eliminated the Mac. And this time, um, Mac had a chance to basically pick who he was gonna win. Killshot had hit the uh the double stomp, Mac hit a stunner. And both Son of Havoc and Killshot were laid out, and Mac pinned Killshot. Very cool. I like how there's 
friction between the three of these guys and kill shot seems to be the more aggressive one for reasons that I'm sure will become clear um, as the season progresses. But yeah, overall, really solid episode. Really, really solid episode. I liked it a lot. There was a lot of good story going on. Um, they managed to cram a lot of no worldwide underground this week, but I'm fine. We can't have them every week as much as I'd love to see more giant Mundo and, you know, more slam town just in general. But, um, yeah, really, really strong episode this week. I loved it. Uh, Sorg will not be back next week. He will be in Philadelphia. Um, so this ep- so Mayhem Underground might be a little late next week, too. But uh, rest assured, I will still be live tweeting it as soon as I get to it. My DVR has been a little wonky recording Lucha Underground, so I've had to uh, wait for iTunes and stuff. But um, I'm trying it on several DVRs in the house now, so hopefully one of them captures Lucha Underground. And uh, I will be live tweeting it, so go to at Mayhem Show. Look at the hashtag MM and tweet along with me. If you see me going off about Lucha Underground and spouting theories, how stuff are horcruxes and things of that nature, and there's still a backdoor pilot for Boone 2 in Lucha Underground Season 4, I'm convinced of this. No one's going to tell me otherwise. Uh, but yeah, feel free to interact. And uh, until next time, this has been Mayhem Underground. Formerly known as the Midweek War. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>